Welcome back everyone, my name is Miguel Galeana, owner and founder of Route 16 Running and Walking. Proud sponsor of Permission to Start Dreaming and the Race for a Soldier. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new 10 mile course. It starts here in front of the Tom Taylor YMCA in Gig Harbor, Washington. Please pay attention to the video coming soon and we'll follow through the course so you can get a lot more detail on how it looks like and the new changes. Okay, we'll see you out on the road and thank you for participating this year. The start itself, we're going to be starting in a different direction than the previous year. We're going to be heading southbound here. Is that we're going to take this new extension to Harbor Hill Drive. This just recently completed and um, did a grand opening actually very recent. So this is all brand new. Again, we're heading opposite of last year. It's a very nice gradual descent. As you can tell, this is all new landscaping. But um, the big difference is that we're going to start on a slight descent. Um, again, fairly quick. Right at it, the gate uh, will be heading downward. Uh, this street will pop out at uh, Burnham Drive. And um, again, this is all new. If you're familiar with Gig Harbor, to the left right now is the shooting range, which is uh, also another place that uh, we have held uh, some events. But as you can tell, here's the Burnham Drive, also a brand new roundabout. So you will be taking a left on Burnham Drive. And again, this start is definitely a fast start. So you do want to control that anxiety. Um, as we know, once a race event starts, we tend to feel very excited and sometimes it's hard to control our pace. So rem remember to continue to work on your uh, relaxing those upper muscles, the arms, keep them relaxed. Uh, and uh, still keep that stride fairly short because again it's a downhill start so again we're on Burnham Drive here and we're gonna be approaching the Hayuhihi uh, storage unit also off of Burnham but again as you can tell it's all flatter uh, than the previous start that's mile one right there, and there's the Hayuhihi on the left. And at this fork, we're going to be taking a slight left uh, instead of going straight. Now at this point, it's gone a little flatter, and actually we'll be doing a, a, a slight upgrade um, in this section. And you can tell there's a little bit of a climb right here. Uh, so we're about mile maybe 1.3 or so. And as you approach this hilltop, you'll notice that we're going to do a quick drop right into Harbor Hill Drive, or Harbor View, I should say. And so it's a pretty quick uh, downhill right about here. So it's the same approach as before. Uh, it's going to be relax those upper body muscles, relax the arms, because at this point it's nice and steep. We're going to take a sharp left here, and then we'll go back to a uh, more of a flatter terrain and again at this point right here it's uh, get get the breathing back under control it's a little flatter and as we approach uh, Peacock Hill Anthony's restaurant on the right there'll be a little bit of a climb coming so nothing too bad but uh, definitely allows you to get back into rhythm Nothing too crazy as far as climbs go. You get to take in uh, downtown Cape Harbor a little bit, the waterfront on the right. Uh, beautiful views. A little pickaboo with views of Mount Rainier if you look to the right. A little bit of a roller through here, and like I said, you'll you'll feel a little bit, especially since the beginning was so much more of a flat downhill. Um, at least sections of it were a little more rolly. So you'll feel a little bit of this climb as we approach Van Hartson. Um, this is all familiar if you've done the course before. This is all similar to the uh, previous course. You'll take it right here and 
you'll notice that this is a nice descend. You can see the climb is coming up, uh, up ahead as we approach City Park. So at this point, again, same thing, kind of relax those upper bodies and just be rested as you get ready to climb this first section. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, the second biggest hill that we have on this course. A little steep, so again, keep your stride nice and short. Don't power up this hill because ultimately it takes too much energy um, to power up this hill. And it's still early enough on the course where you don't want to use up all that energy. As we take a left here, you get a, a really nice break. Um, it's a slight descent, and now that we're on Crescent Valley, as if you've been out here, you'll know that this is one of the most scenic parts of the course. It's definitely a little bit of a roller coaster, so you'll have some nice descent, a um, little bit of climb, a little bit of descent here and there. So, but just absolutely one of the most beautiful sections of this course. Runners will be on the left side going against traffic as we will close the whole lane off it will be coned off and no traffic will be on that side of the this road so again this is the kind of a uh, section that uh, you want to get your rhythm back on uh, as much as you can so look at your GPS and, and try to get into that uh, goal pace that you were looking for this one section here is uh, the one place that I think has the most consistency because it is a long stretch and it is more of a roller so if you have a GPS try to get into that rhythm goal that, um, that you were expecting and as you can tell it's a, again just an absolutely beautiful road and again allows you to really get into that specific pace that rhythm that we look for as long distance runners, you, you want to find that, that one happy place, if you will, that you can just transition every stride. So, we'll be approaching what I believe is water station number two uh, within about uh, a half a mile or so. But again, as you can tell, this is a nice uh, flatter area, um, just a beautiful area. Allows you to, again, to really just maybe find a running partner or somebody that's running about the same pace as you. <clears throat> and more or less, you know, kind of just work together and kind of pass the, pass the time, pass the miles. Um, just because it's such a great place to find that good rhythm. Now, as we, as we approach the kind of the latter half of this section, we will start doing a little bit of. Again, it's been a roller coaster, but we're about to get into a little bit more of that. Slight up, slight, slight down. Um, this is where uh, water station number two uh, is in this area here, and um, you, you can tell now by the terrain that it's going to get into a little bit of a, a little bit more of a climbing such as here so again you're going to feel a little bit more in the lungs then you get a little bit of break here so relax those arms um, climb use a little more upper body if you can again keep that stride nice and short don't use power striding which is where you're pushing up heavily um, it's just too too early still in the race for you to do an overstride again absolutely stunning area and you can tell again, here's a little more of a that downhill, a little more of a roller. And the reason you want to conserve some of that energy is because we are heading into what is the biggest climb on this course, which is 144th, if you're familiar with this area. And so this is a nice little breakthrough here. Um, you, you get again. It's a continuous kind of roller coaster, but you, you get a little more of a favorite downhill as you approach here um, as, as we get closer to 144. Nice and shaded through here, so uh, you do get a little bit of a break from any kind of sun. Okay, as we uh, approach this area here, you can tell again we're about to hit a little bit more of a downhill. 
which is really really nice but um, same thing don't think about opening up your stride too much uh, you do want to relax that upper body shake those arms out a little bit and uh, kind of prepare yourself to again take on the certainly the biggest challenge that we have on this course which is on 44. Clearly it opens up here so not as much shade Unfortunately, the, as we all know, the race is early enough. We don't get that much sun exposure. So, but uh, we're about to take a left on the infamous 144 climb, which we all know. Again, you're coming, you're coming down a slight descent. So once you take a left and start climbing, just think about your upper body, drive those arms and really try to get the same thing, kind of pace yourself because it's a long gradual climb. Nothing too steep, but ultimately it's a long climb. Shorten up your stride. Again, look about 10 feet in front of you. Don't look too far up. Keep your breathing, focus on your breathing, and use those arms to get up there. Once you get the, at the top of this hill, you're gonna have a, some restrooms, a really nice water station, some electrolytes, the option I believe this is also where we're going to put some of the goo gels and so kind of reward yourself a little bit for for climbing this section we'll have some good options for you to replenish with electrolytes and some food as you can tell it's a beautiful section of the course but it is a long slow grinder As we get closer, you can tell we're approaching a uh, four-way stop. This is where we will be taking a left on Peacock Hill. And the water station again will be here on the left. So that's water station three. And once we get to Peacock Hill in the center section, we'll take a left. You get a little bit of a break here. You can go a slight descent. Uh, so it allows you to shake out those arms a little bit um, after that nice big climb. So take advantage of this section, um, same thing, kind of lower those arms, relax them, you've been using them significantly going up 144th, so kind of get the rhythm back a little bit, get the breathing, get the heart rate under control. Um, if you look ahead right here, you can tell there's um, certainly a little bit of a climb as you head into uh, kind of that Canterwood area, if you will, uh, where the old course used to go. Again, not as bad. Um, but you'll certainly still feel it after you climb that 144. So try to relax a little bit here. And really, this is the last section of, of this course in which you'll have this kind of a challenge. So go back to, again, the short stride. Use some of that upper body that you've been working on, I'm sure. Those push-ups, those dips. Um, that's one good reason you, you want to do those things because it really does help climb uh, up hills. Again, Good breathing, look about 10 feet in front of you just to get over this little bit here. And once we get over this little bit, um, uh, you get to enjoy what is maybe close to about two and a half miles of slight downhill. Um, so that's a really nice thing to look forward to after, after climbing 144th in that first section of Peacock Hill. Once, once we get to the cap of this slight dome it really allows you to open up since you're going to be about uh, roughly about two and a half miles out from the finish so if you're definitely being competitive this is where you get to open up your stride uh, and take advantage of a, a slight downhill so we just passed uh, Canterwood entrance we'll be switching over to the right side at this point and from here on out it is a nice quick finish so if, if you've conserved enough energy, this does allow you to open up your stride a little bit more and uh, finish really strong. Uh, runners will be on the right side of this road. Uh, things will be coned off so you have plenty of protection. And, uh, again, this is uh, the one area that you can certainly uh, open up as much as you can. Uh, again, beautiful section of, of this course very wide open. We'll have a water station on the right side. Um, I think we actually just passed it, but um, ultimately it'll be the one section where you can hydrate and really 
take advantage of this fast course at the end. So this is a new section of um, the 10 mile course that we have not been on before. It's through a neighborhood. We're gonna pop out at um, a new housing development. Same thing, all this is slight descend. So you can um, definitely uh, still uh, put in some good effort. A little more zigzagging through this neighborhood, but ultimately it's a smooth transition as we get into this new section of uh, the course. You'll notice in front of you the water tower, and um, for most of you who have not been in this section, this is a, again a nice quick downhill. Uh, we're about to approach the new housing development uh, in which we'll pop out at uh, Morgan Street. Again, all fast, fast, fast. Beautiful new area, good housing development, so the road right now is nice and smooth. Again, all downhill, flatter. Uh, you get a little bit of a slight, slight, slight climb through here, but we're talking about very minute. This section right here, definitely a, again a very slight climb. Once we stick, take a right here on Athena, it is a nice wider road, very open, certainly flat, uh, slight, slight descent. And so at this point, you're roughly about a mile out. And so again, given how much energy you have left, you can certainly open up a little bit. We're going to get some nice downhill finish. Okay, a little bit of a drop off here. So. Again, just watch that stride. Don't overstride. Um, don't want to put too much on those knees here. And as we approach this corner, you'll notice that we'll finish on a slight climb going into that new roundabout on Harbor Hill Drive. And uh, but the reality is, at this point, you're within a half mile, uh, maybe 600 meters to the finish. So. You just gotta pump those arms, get through this little section right here. Uh, here's that new roundabout where we started, going the opposite direction, and certainly uh, again gets flat through here. And we'll be taking a left very shortly here behind the YMCA into the finish. And here we are, the YMCA same finish as before so congratulations happy that you got to experience our new course it's a fantastic course definitely took out some of the rolling hills and um, thank you